Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Arvind Krishnan, and I am um, I will be your presenter for today's webinar. And on behalf of EMWorks, I would like to thank you all for being present here today. So let us uh, start this uh, webinar uh, by quickly going over uh, the agenda that we have for the day. Today we will talk about the following. We're going to look at how EM simulation uh, acts as this missing piece in the entire SOLIDWORKS simulation space. We're going to look at some of the application and key industries that we target and where EM simulation can play a big role. Then we will look at our product bundles. And then finally, we will look at an in-depth demonstration using our product EMS for SOLIDWORKS. Before we start, just a few housekeeping items that I would like to mention. This webinar is being recorded and a link to this recording will be sent to all registrants. Okay? And if you have any questions during this webinar, please feel free to type it into your chat window. At the end of the um, uh, webinar, we'll go over some of them and I will try my best to answer your questions. Now really, uh, EM simulation is this missing piece in SOLIDWORKS simulation. I hope most of you have some exposure towards SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS simulation. We know very well that the SOLIDWORKS simulation consists of the mechanical simulation, which can do structural, thermal, motion, etc. Then there is SOLIDWORKS CFD or FlowWorks, which uh, does the um, CFD part of the SOLIDWORKS simulation. There is also plastic simulation. And really, the missing piece is the electromagnetics uh, in there. And this is where uh, EMS, uh, uh, the product of EMWorks, comes into play. We have uh, two products, EMS and HFWorks, that helps you to do electromagnetic simulation. Uh, and um, we are a gold certified product, and we, are, we have over 500 customers who have used our products. Now, let us look at the product wise application um, here. Now, it's nice to break this up into um, the electromagnetic spectrum. So we play a big role across a wide range of electromagnetic spectrum, right from low frequency, um, AC current, um, we're talking about DC currents, electromagnetics, uh, I mean, uh, permanent magnetics, uh, etc. They all fall under this category of low frequency electromagnetic spectrum. And now that if you concentrate towards the left of the slide, and this is really the different industries and the um, and the applications. So the applications really range from electrical machines like motors and generators, uh, some kind of static machines like transformers. Then we are talking about um, the drives and we're talking about actuators, solenoids, uh, rotary actuator, linear actuators. Then we're talking about electrical sensors based on magnetism and principle of magnetism. And then we're talking about high voltage equipment such as insulators. Um, then uh, a range of equipments in the power industry, insulators, converters, bus bars, etc. And um, finally, we also cater to the high frequency um, space of the electromagnetic spectrum where we can do passive RF and microwave components, components such as antennas, waveguides, etc. And that's a completely different package. It's called HFWorks. It's really not the topic for today's webinar, um, but you, if, you, if you are interested in it, you can visit our website and uh, towards the end, I will tell you where you can find more information about these products. Now we are trusted by many customers, over 500 customers worldwide use our uh, products um, here. And um, here are some of them. So let us now delve into the key industries, key areas where uh, electromagnetic simulation can be of great use um, to you. Now the first industry that we will talk about is in the electric motor industries. Now in the electric motor industry, EMS is used to compute or study the performance of motors. When I say the performance of motors, um, I'm talking about torque, uh, losses in the stator, etc. These are critical engineering quantities that designers of motors and generators um, would like to have um, when, when they design a new product or when they're trying to study their designs. Okay? Obviously, this is a tool that can be used for uh, developing products. 
um, and you can do multiple iterations and the tool is amenable to doing optimization and uh, finding out the best optimized geometry um, for your application. And this really uh, results in the reduction of the weight and the reduction of the materials that are used in creating your product. Okay. And electrical motors, uh, needless to say, have a wide range of applications, right from electric vehicles to, uh, to, to machines, the machine drives, the power tools, etc. And they really range in a wide variety of industries from electrical uh, power generation all the way to oil and gas and so on. So, and it's it's really a billion dollar, uh, multi-billion dollar industry, the electrical motors. And uh, some of the main features of our product, EMS, is the ability for you to understand both, not only the electrical effects, but also the thermal effects. So really you can study how hot your uh, electrical components like motor get, what are its back EMF torque, et cetera, that we already talked about. This is really the answers to some of your questions that um, using a simulation like EMS for SOLIDWORKS will provide. The next industry that I'm going to talk about is belongs to the actuators and solenoids. Basically, EMS is helps you to solve this multiphysics problem where you uh, have uh, an actuator driven by a coil and you can even understand the motion characteristics of the actuator or, or the mobile part. Okay. So EMS helps you to design the right type of coil. It will help you to size springs that may be used in solenoids and so on. And solenoids find a wide variety of applications ranging from machine design, um, uh, weapons, uh, valve industry, and consumer products like washing machines and so on. And the required EMS is just EMS professional. We, towards the end, I'll be showing you some of our bundles and packaging. And so that will it'll be more clear at that time. The third industry that I will be uh, that, that we play a big role is in the power industry. Now, in, in the power industry, EMS helps engineers to design insulators, sensors, transformers, etc. Now, um, it will help you to visualize the electric field uh, around and inside an insulator um, and also help you to predict where there will be a dielectric breakdown and so on. As far as the uh, transformer uh, applications for power industry go, EMS will be able to compute the losses in the transformer. It will also be able to help you to compute the temperature distribution in the transformer. Um, actually, if you visit our website, there is uh, a webinar dedicated towards transformers, which 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 was held in the past, uh, and then you can actually access that video from our website. Now, virtual testing on the computer is, is really becoming a popular thing. And now that can actually ensure a good optimized design at, at, at really um, very low cost and, and in a very short time. And that is really the effectiveness of uh, a simulation, computer simulation program uh, like EMS. Next, I would like to focus on uh, a new um, uh, an upcoming and a developing industry which is all based on permanent magnets. It's really, um, the, the amount of uh, electrical uh, machines and the electrical components that are built using permanent magnets now is increasing at a very, very rapid rate. Okay. Now, EMS helps you to uh, compute forces accurately and also visualize the complex magnetic field uh, resulting from, say, magnet arrays and, and, and Hallbach arrays, etc. And uh, that helps you to um, analyze numerous scenarios, numerous what if scenarios uh, to compute the magnetic field around um, around a particular device. Okay, And the applications range from magnetic lifting machines, um, interesting consumer products, um, and so on. And really, uh, a lot of revolutionary products are being introduced in the market on a day-to-day -day basis, making use of permanent magnets. And uh, a lot of customers of EMS uh, actually produce uh, some very uh, innovative uh, technologies and designs uh, using our product. Then the industry of acoustics and loudspeakers, they also play, uh, uh, EMS plays a vital role in this particular industry. 
EMS helps you to determine the forces on the coil. If you are doing this, it helps you to understand what kind of vibrations you're going to get. And also you can visualize the complex magnetic uh, fields around your voice coil. And in the uh, area of power electronics, EMS helps you to understand uh, a lot of devices that feature in the power electronics, um, you know, like inductors, uh, uh, capacitors, etc. Now, um, EMS uh, can uh, has the ability to predict the performance of of these uh, components. For example, uh, the capacitance of a capacitor or the inductance of an inductor, and so on. So if you are designing uh, components for the power electronic industry, you can actually uh, predict the performance of your uh, devices uh, in a computer um, before having to build a prototype. In the high frequency, we briefly looked upon, and now we will talk a little bit more about it. Um, the first thing that I would like to bring, into, uh, bring to your notice is the ability to design and simulate antennas. Now, HFworks is a product that is dedicated to high frequency simulation. Now, HFworks helps you to understand the performance of antennas. You can plot the gain patterns, um, the S parameters, etc. Um, uh, in fact, I'll, you can study the performance of your antennas across various frequencies. And next is uh, passive RF and microwave components like waveguides, couplers, uh, multiplexers, etc. HFworks helps you to simulate these components and understand the performance uh, of these components. Um, the main thing that an RF designer, RF and microwave uh, designer or an engineer is looking for is to get the S parameters, the gains, the frequency response, etc., of these components. And EMS readily um, helps you to simulate this inside SolidWorks. Okay. You can create uh, industry standard polar plots, the gain plots, and so on, and you can study. Um, these uh, these plots uh, and then understand the performance of your uh, RF and microwave uh, designs. Now, uh, with this very brief introduction, I'm going to go and spend uh, some time um, showing you the EMS product. <clears throat> now, we're going to have a live demonstration today. Now, what we have here is some kind of a rotary actuator. Um, uh, that I'm going to simulate uh, using EMS. Um, and uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my EMS with you. Here I have a rotary actuator that I designed using SolidWorks. Um, if you see here, there are some uh, components of this actuator. Um, there is uh, there is this uh, rotary part. This is really the uh, actuator that rotates uh, about its axis. And there is a little core here, uh, which uh, which is uh, which helps you to complete the magnetic circuit. And there are two coils uh, which carry current. And then um, uh, the objective uh, for this particular simulation is as follows: We are going to energize the two coils using DC current, and we are going to use EMS to understand what is the um, the torque acting on the actuator, the rotary actuator, because of this uh, current. Okay. Now, if you really see here, uh, the actuator is actually turned to a position um, which which is where the magnetic circuit, um, where the flux lines um, do not really uh, easily close the magnetic circuit. So, as a result, when you apply um, some uh, current in the coils, uh, the magnetic flux loves to go um, through this actuator. Uh, to the other side and complete the loop. As a result, there will be a torque acting on the actuator that will tend to move it um, in the, uh, if, you, if you now zoom in, uh, is basically in the clockwise direction as you look on my screen. So that helps you to uh, couple and uh, 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 close the magnetic circuit. So let us understand what kind of torque acts on the actuator if we apply a current through the coil. There are several steps in doing a simulation in EMS. Actually, the first step is to create a study. So to create an EMS study, you right click on the top folder and select study. Now, there are several different study types that one can use in EMS. In this particular example, we are 
interested in DC currents and a static simulation, hence we use magnetostatic. EMS also has the ability to do uh, transient uh, problems and AC problems, so in terms of transient magnetic and AC magnetic. EMS can also do electrical simulations like electrostatic, electric conduction, AC electric. Uh, this might be a topic for another day. Uh, and EMS can do some multiphysics type of simulation by coupling the magnetic simulation to a thermal as well as motion and also structural uh, coupling. <clears throat> For this particular problem, we're going to uh, compute, uh, just do a magnetostatic simulation where we are interested in computing the torque acting on the actuator. If you're interested in computing the inductance and the flux linkage, etc., of the coils, then you can check uh, compute circuit parameters. And EMS can also do parametric type of studies where you can have currents, uh, voltages, number of turns, and also any model geometry, anything that you can create and put a dimension on SOLIDWORKS in SOLIDWORKS can actually be used as a parametric a parameter to do a full parametric study using EMS. Okay, so here we create a magnetostatic study. Once you create a magnetostatic study, we have to define materials for all our components. Now the coil um, is made of copper, so let's go ahead and apply material and select the conductor material and select copper. Now notice that EMS comes with its own uh, material database um, and these material database comes with a pre-populated list of materials. For example, we have a list of steel, we have a list of conductor materials, cables, ceramics, biological materials, etc. Now this is a fully customizable material database and as a result, one can actually create your own materials, our own materials and use that for simulation. Now um, we're gonna take the core as well as the, uh, as the outer core as well as the rotating actuator and then we're gonna define a, a steel. Um, so that's made of say a steel 1010. Now you see here the BH curve, etc., is all uh, automatically created for you in the EMS material. And finally, um, there are two components that I've hidden. I'm going to just show them. Um, it's basically the air geometry. EMS uh, has the ability to compute the fields, not only in the conductor material as well as the steels, but also in the surrounding air geometry around this material and inside this, inside this uh, rotary uh, actuator design. As a result, we must um, have uh, some components for air and uh, that can be easily created inside SOLIDWORKS and you can apply uh, uh, air material um, to those geometry. So I create an air material. Now um, this will ensure that you can see the magnetic flux, uh, the fields, etc. even in the air, air space around this uh, particular geometry. Now once you have created the material, the next step is to uh, create the coils. Now that we have created the air material, I'm going to go ahead and hide the air geometry. Okay. Now this is a step where I'm going to create a coil. So I'm going to go ahead and create what is known as a wound coil. To create a coil in EMS is extremely simple. You select the components that comprise the coil. You also select the face um, through which the coil, uh, the current flows through the coil. So when I do the show preview, you can see here the current, the direction of the current that flows inside the coil. So it's denoted by these green arrows here. And once you de defined the current direction, now it's time for you to define a coil. Now EMS allows you to do two types of coil. We can do a current driven coil or a voltage driven coil. In this particular example, we'll just do a current driven coil We'll take that as uh, 20 turns um, and, and assume the current to be five amps per turn. Okay. Now we've created a coil here. Um, and then now it's time for us to create a second coil. So we create a bound coil here. And then we also select um, the phase through which the current goes in. And you can see here um, the direction of the coil. 
So again, we make it 20 turns and, and 5 amps as before. And now you can see um, the coil. And, and if you use your right hand rule, uh, the right hand thumb, and then curl your fingers in the direction of the coil, you're going to see the direction of the magnetic flux. Okay. Now we need to make sure that the direction of the magnetic flux uh, in, in such a way that they, they, they nicely form the loop and close the circuit. So now this uh, is clear and it's able to do that. Okay. Now, finally, what we need to do is uh, tell the program to compute the torque acting on this actuator. Okay. And uh, this is done by what is known as a virtual work. So we request the program to compute the torque acting on the actuator. Okay. Now, uh, EMS is a finite element program. What it means is uh, there is a step called the meshing or discretization of the geometry that allows you to break up this geometry into finite element mesh element and now ems ha has an automatic mesh generation feature so i'm going to quickly show you that so one can actually create a mesh automatically inside ems okay. now ems can uh, compute the relative volumes of each of these components and then create a finite element mesh um, for you uh, in a very sh short time as you see here but the power of uh, a finite element solution is really in how one can uh, change these mesh parameters. For example, I can actually do what is known as a mesh control. I can apply mesh controls on bodies or I can apply mesh controls on faces. So let's say I have 2mm two, um, two uh, mesh size in this particular actuator. And also in this, um, uh, in this, uh, you know the the stator part of this one so let's say i have 3.5 so i can actually do uh, a mesh control uh, similar to what i just did now and ems can go ahead and create a, a mesh now it will respect the mesh controls that i applied and so now when you see the mesh now um, you're going to see that more elements are applied in the actuator um, and on the outer uh, stator so the um, ability to do both an automatic mesh as well as uh, a mesh that can be controlled um, pro makes EMS uh, a very powerful tool um, for engineers and designers. Okay. So you can see this finite element mesh. Let me go ahead and hide this. And now we have all the, uh, all the steps that we did. Um, and that should be enough for us to run the simulation and take a look at this result. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and run a simulation. Now, um, you can see here that this is being run live. Uh, and EMS solvers are uh, multiprocessor. They support multiprocessors. Uh, and as a result, uh, you know, a simulation of this uh, size, uh, which has close to around 300,000 elements, um, can actually be completed um, in, in less than a minute or so. So let's just uh, give it some time for it to uh, complete the simulation uh, before we can go ahead and take a look at some of the results. Okay, now that it is completed, now it's 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 a good idea to take a look at some of the results. Um, the first result uh, that we want to do is to understand what is the torque, and that can be done by looking at the result table now when you go and take a look at the result table you can actually find out what is the torque acting on the uh, on the actuator so the torque is torque about um, z axis okay that you see here the xyz uh, coordinate system in solidworks right in the bottom um, left hand corner of the screen and we are looking at uh, the torque acting um, Let's go to the torque tab and the torque acting about z-axis. This is really the major part of the torque. The other ones are all uh, several orders of magnitude smaller. So the main order, and also notice the sign. The negative sign tells you um, that uh, it's, it's, it's going to close the circuit. It's going to close the loop, and, and, and the, the, the actuator is actually going to rotate in a clockwise direction. Okay, with reference to the z-axis that you see here. So um, that's the torque acting on the actuator. So EMS has the ability to easily give you the value of a physical quantity like torque that, that's of great interest to engineers. Okay. 
Now one can look at uh, several things. Now let's see that we can look at the magnetic flux density um, in the coil. And uh, I can go ahead and take a, a section plot where you can cut through the model to um, take a look at the mag magnetic flux density. Now this is the magnetic flux density uh, in the coil. And, and you can see here um, the, the red values represent uh, high values of the magnetic flux and density. And, and the blue and the green ones are relatively lower values. And then one can also take a look at uh, a vector plot, for example. And uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, a vector plot. Now, the vector plot gives you a sense of uh, how the uh, flux lines move inside this uh, circuit. So let me just uh, make the size a little bit smaller. And you can see the um, see the vector plots. So now you can see how the flux moves inside the uh, actuator and through throughout your circuit. One of the main power of a, a, a software like EMS is to do several what if scenarios. An engineer is never satisfied with his first design or his only design. So he wants to do many things. For example, what really happens, what I have is a, is a very small current. Imagine that I need a lot more torque. Um, what, what happens when I apply uh, another current? So, so I've, as you see here, EMS is organized into several studies. So you can actually do another torque study uh, automatically, and you can now uh, apply a different current value. So for example, here, I have applied 40 turns and 22 turns, 22 amps per turn. What really happens uh, in this scenario? So I can actually recreate another study, and uh, which I've already done prior to this demonstration. And let's now take a look at, um, first of all, the result table. Let's look at the torque. Now you can see that this torque is significantly higher. It's about 0.2 Newton meter. So obviously, as you increase the current, you're going to get generate more torque. So if you really need to know the optimum current turns that you need to generate a particular torque, one can now compare studies and you can look at how they're across the uh, axis. And uh, you can see here the torque about the axis, um, one study to the other. So let's go here. So in the first study, uh, when we had a very little amp turns, we, we just had 2 uh, milli Newton meter. And now we have 0.2 Newton meter at uh, height. So you can actually see how the torque changes as a function of amp turns. Okay. So talking about design scenarios, uh, this is really a program that is designed to be able to do that. Now, another um, uh, good feature of EMS is really the ability for you to uh, perform uh, model changes. So really, what happens if I uh, if I close the angle here. So imagine if I go, I have in SolidWorks, I actually defined an angle of 60 degrees. So what really happens when I when I have them at 45 degrees? So something like this. So here I made a design change, okay? Now I would like to understand, okay, at, at 45 degrees, uh, what is the torque, okay? So now I can go back to EMS. I can actually recreate, um, a study so I can do that simply by dragging and dropping uh, torque at 45 degrees okay and I can give meaningful names to study as you see here um, now now uh, I have actually copied everything from my previous study my materials come through perfectly uh, my coils obviously I think these are uh, this is a study where I've applied actually a large amp tons so that's about 880 the amp turns uh, here. Um, and now what really happens uh, at this particular um, position? So to be able to do that, I can go ahead and update my geometry. Okay, after updating the geometry, you can see here, um, you can see all the geometry uh, things update automatically in SOLIDWORKS and also this updated geometry is actually used in EMS um, to do the new simulation. Okay, now, now that you have done that, we need to go ahead and create the mesh and, uh, and then run the simulation.
Okay, the mesh is completed and you can see here the mesh corresponds to the new geometry when we turn. And then now we are ready to go ahead and solve the problem. Now, um, there are about 420,000 elements and you know, as before, the multi-core support of EMS ensures that these problems can be solved in less than a minute. In case if you're wondering what kind of machine specs um, one needs for EMS while this problem is solving, I'm actually solving this out of an HP laptop that has about 12 GB of RAM and uh, it's an i7 processor um, with uh, I think a dual core. Um, nowadays you have quad core or even uh, octa core uh, type of processors. EMS makes use of all the different cores in your memory, uh, in, in your computer to do this uh, solution. Um, obviously, more the RAM, the better and the faster it is, and uh, these kind of problems uh, get solved uh, quickly. Okay, the, computer, the solution has finished and now we can go and take a look at the result table and we can look at the torque and you can really see um, the new torque here. So it's really dimmed uh, between 45 and 60 degrees. The torque uh, in terms of Newton meter hasn't changed much. And, and that's, uh, these are really some of the engineering quantities that one can uh, take a look at uh, using EMS. Okay, so now for this particular uh, new position, one can uh, one actually updates the plots, and you can see here now um, the, the the red areas and the corresponding magnetic flux density are much closer towards the saturation of steel. They're still not they're still not there yet, but it's now 1.3 um, at this Amstons, and, and we are we are coming to a point where the steel is about 60 to 80 percent saturated. And one can actually even take a look at the vector plots now. To really see how the the new um, the new position uh, influences the flow of the magnetic field. Now now you have a much better um, path now for the magnetic field to flow. Um, still, it would like um, to 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 rotate more, and hence there is a torque um, for the field uh, to be uniformly flowing through. The ideal position is where they're all lining up, and then. Um, in that case, there will be hardly any torque. Okay. Now, um, with this particular um, example, I think we have um, come to the um, uh, really the uh, end of today's demonstration. Um, so, with this, uh, let me go back, jump back to my uh, slide, and uh, we can go into some closing comments. Now, uh, before we summarize, uh, before we come to a conclusion, let's summarize some of the key industry and applications 
um, that uh, EMS, you can use EMS if you, if you belong to such industry or your application. So we looked at electric motors, transformers, actuators, solenoids, loudspeakers, um, high power devices, uh, insulators, transformers, etc. Um, and uh, so there's a wide range of applications ranging from um, uh, automotive to chemical to aerospace to uh, oil and gas uh, and uh, consumer product industries. So they range all over the place. Now this is a time when we would like to understand the EMX product portfolio. Now as I said EMWorks has two products. One is the EMS product that's denoted by this EM and then other is the HFworks product. HFOX product is the RF and microwave for high frequency and that was really not the subject for today's uh, presentation um, but that product just has one product where you, you have resonance as parameters antennas and you can couple that to thermal simulation. Now the EMS products comes in two flavors one is the EMS professional other is the EMS premium. So everything that I showed you today in the demonstration can be done using EMS professional. EMS Professional comes with six different types of solvers, um, electrostatic, electric conduction, AC, these are the electric solvers. Then we have the magnetostatic, AC, magnetic, and transient. Um, these are the magnetic solvers. Um, we also have the ability to couple to thermal simulation and thermal stress, and also couple to motion analysis. Now these are add-on products that you can purchase for additional costs uh, and which allows you to do various multiphysics inside EMS. Okay, The EMS premium uh, comes with all of these add-ons and in addition it also comes with this powerful parameterization feature that allows you to parameterize any SOLIDWORKS dimension or any EMS uh, uh, time, uh, quantity like current, number of turns, uh, frequency, etc., and you can run a parametric simulation. So, um, really, uh, EMS. Uh, these are the two flavors, and uh, EMS license is is basically activation based license, which is the default license for EMS. But it also comes uh, with a network license as an add-on uh, for additional charge. Okay. But if you read to know more about the product and the product bundles, uh, feel free to visit our website um, or uh, give us a call or or, uh, or send us an email. Um, again, on behalf of uh, EMWorks, and uh, we would like to thank you all for patiently um, uh, participating in today's webinar. I hope the session was informative. Um, I would encourage you to visit the emworks.com website. There is a lot of product information, application notes, white papers, etc. Uh, our YouTube channel um, has a lot of videos of prior um, uh, webinars and also product training videos and videos related to many aspects of our product. Um, you could uh, take your time and visit them. Uh, when you have uh, some inquiries, uh, please contact our sales. Uh, Adam, our uh, sales manager, is very happy to hear from you. His, his coordinates are given here. And finally, I would like to thank you all and uh, again say that a copy of this recording will be sent to you. So if you want to go over some of these uh, webinar items later, you can, you can go and do that. It's a YouTube video that uh, you will get a link to. And please feel free to share this with uh, your colleagues and friends who might have missed this session today. Okay. With this, um, I'll open the floor to some questions. If you have some questions, you may uh, type them in and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, if not, uh, we, uh, we look forward to having another discussion with you. Uh, if, you, if, you if you think these applications are interesting and you would like to understand specifically how EMS can help you solve your problem, uh, give us a call and our uh, application engineers are, are there to understand your problem and suggest solutions if we have them. Thank you very much and uh, look forward to having you in another webinar.